Hey, a b- banana. I'm super stoked that you actually came. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's it, it came out like like a, like the announcer for Unreal Tournament, but if if the announcer for Unreal Tournament was doing a sex game, <laughs> and my so brain it came out like honey cans. <laughs> oh god! I've committed crimes, unspeakable crimes on the street. <laughs> That's to cancels. <laughs> oh my god. Very groovy. I always <laughs> do. <laughs> well, was that was that some kind of euphemism, right? It was. Yeah. You doing okay, man? You seem generally disheveled. Oh, uh, you know, I'm running on roughly zero hours of sleep. Same, Oliver. Same. Did you stay <laughs> up all night working on the movie? I sure as heck. Did, yeah. Well, that's a surefire indicator of quality. Correct. Oh, wait, aren't we supposed to be tempering his expectations, though? <laughs> We're not doing that very well, are we? Uh, I'm trying. If I almost excreted my soul from the tortured meat sack containing it, then it must be art, right? I understood most of those words, but not in that order. This movie? It's my opus. Power. Opus. You see? At first I thought... That- Hey, this looks kind of cute. I can make this PG-7. Add a few dancing CG raccoons. Ah, uh, small dancing CG creatures. Objectively a fine choice. Go on. But then I thought, what I need is to think outside the box. So, me Funkuff, what about a story that starts off funny and silly and then becomes soul-crushingly tragic? Uh, I hope that's not foreshadowing for this. Has he just made uh, happy feet? Uh, oh god. <laughs> but then I thought, what if the movie has no genre, just a string of raw footage arranged out of order and with ill-fitting music played all over the whole thing? So we're making French cinema. <laughs> <laughs> you fell asleep nice. at and or on your keyboard, didn't you? It is an interesting theory. Oh, Oliver. It's cool, though just whatever you do, don't... Oh, here we go. Uh-oh. Tally ho! Ollie, my boy! Are you ready for the <laughs> grand premiere, lad? I sure am, sir. Marvellous! Simply wondrous! I'm right chuffed to see what you've made. Y- yep. I'm sure people will just find it dandy, sir. Not to worry, lad. The movie need only make enough in sales to revitalize my failing enterprise. Ah, yes, no pressure. So, no pressure. Right, yes. Groovy. Anyway, I must go take my seat as I don't wish to miss the euphoric magic of the silver screen. Jerry, I don't know. Well, he seemed chipper. Yep. Yeah, it's almost like he expects my film to save his failing business. <laughs> huh. Well, I wanted to talk to you about that. Um, hold on. There's a few people behind you in line. We can talk about whatever that is while I'm stocking the reel. Okay? I guess it can wait. Let me just step to one side. Oh, God. Greetings, my respective Fezd and Green friends. I'm here to attend your dazzling cinematic premiere as, the, as a guest of honour. He has honour? Somewhere. <laughs> Tell him, man. Glad to hear it. Oh, I'm sure you most certainly are having a guest as distinguished as the one and only Theodore Russellbelt. I've only just realised that the name is just says Theodore Russellbelt and then Adventurer! <laughs> Like, oh, glorious. like everyone else just has a name, but... <laughs> oh no, this, this this guy is too dramatic. I love him. <laughs> Can I murder this guest with my bare hands, hon? No, not this. One banana. All right, that'll be £6.99 for a ticket, sir. But could I have some more? Hey, gods. You truly expect me to pay for a ticket at my own red carpet event? Fear or you aren't actually in the movie. Correct, but a specimen from my vast array of emu most certainly is, yes? I'm here on his behalf while he recovers from his life-threatening injuries. (laughs) That (laughs) emu is fine and you know it. I know nothing of the sort, I'm afraid. Listen, Mr. Wrestlebelt, this isn't personal. Everyone's gotta pay for a ticket. This very event is a fundraiser. To raise money to keep the cinema open. All right, I'll tell you what, my lad. How's about in exchange for a free ticket into your screening? I give you free and unrestricted access to the zoo. But isn't entry to the zoo 
already. Three? Well, how about that? It looks as I've already gone through with my end of the bargain. <laughs> He's a man of his word. I swear all you ask. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose that means you have a legal and unwavering obligation to... All right, all right, you crusty F. Just go on in. <laughs> uh, Oliver is growing on me, honestly, in, in part I, two. Yeah. <laughs> like... mm -hmm. He is improving. Bully to that, then. See you in Hollywood, my boy. Hi, society, here I come. God, I despise that man. <laughs> and I love voicing him. <laughs> you know what? I really should listen to you more. Hell yeah. If you think my takes on people are nifty, you should see my takes on jerkies and... Oh, no. <gasps> Sup, bozos? Billy's here now. <clears throat> hey, you. Yeah, you. Scrap. Get on out of here. Tonight's our big night, and I have enough to do about having to fixate on my, hawk my hawkish gaze on you. All night. Yeah, plus this movie's rated 18s and up, dude. I shed my pants halfway during filming and refused to put them back up. Oliver, you did remember to add a blur and post, right? Shoot. Guess the movie will just be that bit more memorable, huh? So yeah, no minors allowed. Scram. Hey, I'm no minor. Look, I've even got my ID on me. <laughs> <laughs> just the name Little Billiam. <laughs> Mayor Mingus approved. Don't check, lads. It's all good. Full-time mad I'm bastard. I love. I, I want that. I was thinking I, I should actually just make this my Twitter profile. I think this identification might be fake, but I can't pinpoint any obvious discrepancies. Are we, are we going Phoenix right? Uh, I think it's more um, papers, please. Oh, God, yes. Can we gulag little Billy? Oh, how many people I'd love to gulag at my day job. <laughs> Valid. Same, actually, right now. Same. <laughs> Look, you little brat. It's a... Uh, no. Either way, like I said, I can't have you. Tarnishing. My film's one opportunity to save this place with your... Loud. Shenanigans. Loud shenanigans? Hey, Buzzer, for your information, I'm actually planning to be on my best behaviour tonight. You told me earlier that you were going to smuggle your megaphone into the theatre to repeatedly bellow Krongus during the... <laughs> 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 Let me try this line again, because I just, I corpsed. To repeatedly bellow Krongus during the gun. What? Oh god, I wish that were me. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I'm trying it again. I'm trying it again. To repeatedly bellow Krongus during the climax. There we go. Well Wait, during the what? <laughs> the, <laughs> the climax. <laughs> You gangrenous snitch! You're like nine. What the actual F? Why aren't you learning words like Krongus and Gangrenous? Pal, you think I didn't come up with Krongus myself? <laughs> Krongus. I got like eight kids on the playground who can back me up. Graham, go. Get out. Fine, whatever, Bozos. I misread that as Bezos <laughs> initially. I was like. <laughs> Damn, little Billy oh. really is bringing out the slurs. <laughs> Movie's gonna totally bomb anyway. Anyways, bro, no assistance from me required. Ciao. Wouldn't Bezos being a slow imply millionaires were oppressed? My ears. My ears. <laughs> that was a bit crungus. I can't believe little Billy and was a uh, velociraptor all along. <laughs> I mean, it checks out. I'm dining the cops right now. Is this how I come off to Jerry? I need to send him another fruit basket or something. Another? First one didn't seem to sway him. Huh. Define fruit. Apple core. Banana peel. Used eggplant. Define a used eggplant. Oh. Hey, look, another customer. <gasps> Yay! I love... Oh my God. <laughs> right. Hey, it's me. I'm here now. Oh. Yeah. Hey, sup, Randy? What brings you here? I love that there was an audience cheer when Randy <laughs> arrived, and that was also exactly it's how deserved. I felt. <laughs> oh, you know, I was just rummaging around in the dumpster out back when I overheard someone mentioning the pr premiere. Is Randy Oliver's ex? Oh my god. Well, heck, it's groovy to have you here. I'd believe it. Yes, yeah, so uh, what's the movie about? That's a great question. Right, yeah. I'm in it, I'm in it. Uh, what the? 
Wait, something about you feels familiar. Do you spend much time at the park, perhaps? Um, so you're the naked green figure I keep seeing scurrying around in my peripheral vision. Oh yeah, that'd be me all right. My fears of losing my mind have now been replaced by the tangible fear of encountering you. Hey, that's progress. Good job, man. Yeah. All right, so that'll be six ninety nine, Randy. Y you can offer me a discount on account of me being vaguely familiar, couldn't you? Could you? I suppose. I could drop to five pounds since I... Uh, how about 25 pence? Randy, if you have no money to your name, why do you even bother showing up? I just wanted to get in. That's the cold. Oh, Randy. Mm -hmm. Good call. This place is as warm and as moist as it can be. Yeah, about that. Why is it so humid in here? I'm sure it's just from the mold on the walls breathing. Huh. Well, it is warm. Look, you're the last dude in line, Randy. Just go sit in the back and don't make any noise, all right? Hot dog, Oliver. You're the best. C can you be my father? What? <laughs> Randy. <laughs> oh my god. I'm Randy. going. I'm going. Randy. Randy. Oh Randy. <laughs> Randy needs a hug from someone other than his pillow girlfriend. His trash Made girlfriend. Of trash. Yeah. Yep. That's why I'd call myself if I was in a relationship. Free. Oh God, free. <laughs> what? I meant spawn. What do you oh, think right. I meant? <laughs> no, I meant trash girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> I keep forgetting to ask him about that bandage on his head. I heard from little Billy, played me upon him, that he hit his head on a rock. But I'm sure there's got to be more to the story than that, right? If it's anything like him, I don't want to hear it. Oh, come on. Randy's lovely. Once you get to know him, I'm sure he'd make someone very happy. Yeah, an organ snatcher, maybe. Or a mean-spirited coroner looking to take his frustration out on a body. Jesus. Are we volunteering wow. for when we go and end up dating Randy? I I, I love Randy unconditionally. and uh, Same. I, wa I want to date Randy. <laughs> Is Randy dead in this scenario? Inconsequential. Perhaps, yeah. Randy turmoil and bodies aside, we've got a screening to initiate. Initiate isn't a very call to action -y verb, is it? Like start, do, make, squirt, those have punch. Initiating is like pressing the on button on an ointment making machine. Just do the screening. Yes, let's. All right, let's get. Olive man, what is this place? Oh God, is that Bertha? No caressing Bertha. I mean you this time, <laughs> Oliver. Oh no. Oh my God. <laughs> what is that on the, oh, on uh, the left wall? Obey, only on you there, can prevent cinema fires oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right let's get olive man what is this place um bertha has a hat this is my vow sanctum Blair. oh yeah bertha does have a hat and it's pretty cool mm. oh, specifically yeah. wait is bertha sentient potentially i mean it was implied that humans and machines were, and well living things and machines were merged at some point so mm, yeah like maybe bertha is just more machine than living thing Deep law. Mm. We are entering deep law mm. territory. And potentially cin cinema fire territory. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> oh, projection room, room number one. We are is number one. B hey. B B it sure as heck is. Say hello to Big Bertha. Our pride and joy. <laughs> Oliver, she just moved. Yeah, she probably just had some air stuck in her. Oliver, she moved again. Yeah, ditto. Oh, she's a ditto. Oliver, I think your movie projector is sentient. And angry. Ah, oh, don't be ridiculous. She's just... She's got a lot of soul. I'm pretty sure she devours souls. Mood. If she's... Eating. Souls, then how are said souls... Haunting. The place then, huh? Huh. Checkmate. Hmm. Ah, uh, shoot. Okay, maybe we're... Slightly. Effing haunted. Laugh it up. Oliver, she shouldn't be in here. She's a wild animal, man. You're not insisting I turn her over to the zoo, are you? No, let her roam free. I can't believe we're taking the moral high ground. You need to let her roll around the open plains where she can feel the open air in her pipes and bolts. Roll over as many small critters as she wants. It's not right having her all cooped up in here. But she's our only movie projector. Dude, you can buy a used projector at a garage sale for like 15 pounds. Don't you want her to be happy? You're right, you're right. I'll bring this up to Dickens after the premiere. If we have time to talk about anything other than our movie's vast success and the sudden salvation of the cinema itself. Yeah, right. Banana, 
Can I ask you a hard question? One that I'd like you to answer completely honestly. Uh Uh-huh. This movie. The one we should have loaded into Bourbon minutes ago. Yeah, right, that one. Do you think... Do you think it'll turn things around for me? For us. Uh... Aha, see? I knew this would come up. I'm right, as always. Shut. I have a question to answer. Did you just tell me to shut up after I just finished speaking just so you could answer my question, which I'd already finished asking? (laughs) Yes. Not gonna lie, I was talking to the narrator. (laughs) Be honest with your partner. Yeah. Yeah, not gonna lie, I was talking to the narrator. You realise the movie's done, don't you? Pal, I'm not recording you right now. The movie's ready to air. Like, right now. Speaking of, I gotta ask. Do. You think the movie will turn things around? Look, man, I haven't even seen the movie. For all I know, it's just 90 minutes of me gargling paint thinner. (laughs) Okay, not all. 90 minutes of comprised solely of... Ah, shoot. That's already a sign of a turbulent development process. There should realistically be listen to no paint for no gargling to fill up extra time <laughs> you know i think you expected too much from yourself okay fine i rushed the ed- rush to the editing i guess it no i mean all of this you're in your 20s man that's pretty young in human years isn't it now nah, it's ancient so what you think developing a film was too much i don't get how you expected to repair mr dickens's dying business on your own on your first try at the last moment possible are those pee jars in the back? Yep. Is oh. Oliver the sniper? <laughs> it says, don't, it said something like, don't forget to empty the piss jars on your way out, my boy, and sign Mr. Dickens. Are they Mr. Dickens' piss jars? I couldn't say. <laughs> oh, no. Ebenezer Dickens. Your dirty pee jars. Oh. <laughs> As opposed to his cle- No, wait, his pee jars would be sterile, surely. <laughs> 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 you know what? Fair, fair. Hey now, for all we know, the public could love this movie. And they could <laughs> despise it, correct? Isn't it crazy that you're relying on this one shot to define your future? Phone gods, you're right. I've set myself both of us up for failure. Hey now, I don't give a flying fuck if this flops. That's what she said. I didn't mean you and me. I meant me and Mr. Dickens. Oh, right, yeah. But look. You and Mr. Dickens will live. I've always got a room in my tent. If you need somewhere to crash, or I'm sure you'll find a new apartment. I'm gonna, I'm gonna invite Ollie. Ollie's coming back to the yep. tent. Oh, all right. Yes. I've always got a room at my tent. If you need somewhere to crash. That's sweet. Real. Sweet, but. This was all gonna happen anyway, man. I just want you to be okay if slash when it does. Okay. I've we've done our best. Time to load Buffer up and get to it then. Speaking of, again, you've got to release her into the wild soon. I know, I know. Like tomorrow soon. I know, I know. Take a breath, man. Relax. People could really love this. Yeah, I suppose they could. All right, well, it's been real. Here goes nothing. I really, I genuinely hope there's like a 90-minute film (laughs) embedded into the game. I would die for Oliver right now. <laughs> All it takes is one pun. I'm a simple woman with simple needs. Flavor <laughs> my words, Daddy. Hello, Dial Town. Rachel from the Dial Town News Network here. This just in. Last night's premiere of the Passion of Frog thing has been reported as a resounding failure. Despite Aww. curious advertising efforts, in the end, the event only had a modest turnout of 24 unsatisfied patrons. Of the four reviews who happened to attend the showing, three are now comatose. The remaining reviewer who's still conscious doesn't really want to talk about what he saw. Poor guy. <laughs> we interviewed a few citizens who attended the premiere and they had this to say. I think hyperthermia would have been more passable in all honesty. Lack of footage of myself is criminal. Criminal, I say. Say, is this live? Come on down to the Dialtown City Zoo, friends. We have tape ears. Tita tape ears, bully. Okay, enough of him. Honestly, I think that movie converted me from an unsure agnostic to a firm atheist. No merciful God would have let that scene where the green one got called paint thinner exist. No matter how disinterested he is in our plight. Well, there you have it. I know they say that all publicity is good publicity, but to these people, we at the Dowertown News Network would like to recommend giving the Passion of Frog thing a watch and seeing how you feel then. Amazing. So I don't think it went well. <laughs> good morning, Banana. I hope you're... What in front God's name are you staring at? Put a frog in a pot. Is that a tape mesh frog? It is. It is. 
oh put a frog God. in a pot. Look at it. <laughs> Look at it. <laughs> it's so cute. It is precious to me. I want one. Okay. Put a frog in a pot. Put a put a frog in a pot. Watching <laughs> him trying to climb out. Just a pro tip here. The last 17 times you tried this, the frog died. Yeah, but this time there's no lid, nor a lit fire under the pot. So the odds are fairer, methinks. Right. What's your end game here, anyhow? I want to see the definitive threshold of frog slaughter. Oh my god, no! <laughs> yes, that's... Say, I wonder how Oliver's premiere went. Isn't that a much more engaging topic to think about? Nah, little Billy told me a few days ago that it apparently bombed. In fairness, is little Billy really a reliable source of information? Yeah, he was the one who informed me what 9-11 was. Oh no. Oh my god. Oh god. And he said it was an inside job, conducted by clowns. In fairness, he did show me a newspaper that reported the clown thing. Yeah, but in fairness, you're illiterate. I bet you any money that article wasn't about what he said it was. What makes you say that? Why would the article's picture have been of a tractor flattening a beach seal? Well, why was there a tractor even on that beach in the first place? Maybe if you knew how to read, you could have found out. Fine, I'll go visit Oliver and ask him about his lousy premiere. Brilliant, yes. I want the frog in a pot. <gasps> oh no. Wow. Uh, oh, the place burnt down. Hello? Oliver? I really brought the house down, huh? Where is he? Where is the boy? Well, I don't know. Sure you walked into the right place? This, this ain't the cinema. Mark my words, the cinema was right here. That must mean... Yikes, I guess it's already gone. Ah, drat. Alas, I was too late. You might still be able to get Oliver's mailing address to send your condolences via mailman, mailwoman, or perhaps carrier pigeon. Ah, yes. God <laughs> <laughs> The free gym. Oh my god. That was exactly the joke I was about to make. <laughs> <laughs> Lord Christ. Here, friendo. I was wondering when you dropped by. What's the haps? Olive Man, you're here! Have you returned here once more to burn the place down in a scornful rage? Gasp, did you do all this? I lugged the remaining furniture out of here and took an axe to the light fixtures, if that's what you're talking about. But fortunately, I'm neither vandal, salvager, nor copper wire thief. Then why do you wreck this place? Seems rather rude to me. Hey, I'm just following Mr. Dickens' orders. Oliver, my boy, if you're not stripping copper wire from the walls, then why would Mr. Dickens order such mayhem, such needless destruction, such abundant and ceaseless malarkey? Well, okay, I might have misspoken. I guess I am um, salvaging somewhat since it's my job to salvage. What's left over from our failed cinema business? I don't understand. What else of value could possibly be left here? I heard from little Billy that the premiere bombed. Of course. He tell you that. He showed me an article from the Happenings paper. Oh, he showed you the newspaper review? Yeah, he said they tore you to shreds. Every single critic who attended the premiere and isn't comatose. In fairness, that's only one critic. But, I mean, yeah, the film didn't exactly get glowing reviews, you know, on account of it being so groundbreaking. True art is never appreciated in its own time. I don't know, man. Let me quote the review. If I could douse a film in gasoline and light it up, I'd watch the film burn with glee. And this time, I'd actually enjoy watching it. Hey, that reviewer had a... 90. Whole minutes to burn this place down while the film was still playing. He was... Totally... Bluffing. Oliver Swift's newest and only movie is an abortion of cinema itself. I'm sorry, Oliver Swift. Fuck's sake. Oh my fucking god. <laughs> That makes me wish That's I quite... was likewise aborted. God damn it. Those reviews are harsh. See? That's a strong statement. In the same way assassinating Bigfoot over a parking ticket would be. Bigfoot. <laughs> totally. Can't drive. Bigfoot fucks. I'm sure he can drive. <laughs> Look, I can't refute that Bigfoot frigs. But you also can't refute that negative publicity is still publicity. For your information, almost 5,000 people ended up showing up to the screening after that review. What? 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 Oh, is, is it like the room of this universe now? I think so, yeah. Oh, it is. They all wanted to gawk at our marvellous train wreck. Wait, you made bank? Yeah, people turned up in droves to see our depraved horror flick. Wait, the movie was filmed. we filmed was a depraved horror flick? Well, I initially imagined it more of a transcendent piece of anger that encapsulated both the sincere beauty and the raw anger. All that falls under the huge firm of phone gods. And our movie wasn't that? People didn't really notice the beauty under the divine firm, but... Plenty. 
for the untapped blistering rage and shards themselves. So hang on a second, did we end up making cinematography's answer to Daikatana? I think so. <laughs> Oliver Swift will make you his bitch. Oh, it hurts. <laughs> it hurts. <laughs> so people turned up expecting a cutting edge horror flick. Yep, and um, we delivered. Okay, that makes sense. The premiere was a success then. So wait, why on phone gods green earth are you tearing the cinema apart? Well, see, Mr. Dickens and I had a conversation about expectations. Great ones. Uh -huh. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, he was immensely thankful that I'd saved the cinema, but it turns out he really didn't think I could actually pull this off at all. Just wanted to see what I'd come up with. Huh. Why? Well, Mr. Dickens informed me of something pretty surprising, actually. Turns out, operating a cinema wasn't actually his ultimate dream at all. It was for him to go into directing movies of his own. Huh? You know how it is. Mr. Dickens grew up in a different era. He started a family once he came of age, which he obviously had to provide for. He didn't have the opportunity to just up and leave for Hollywood. The stakes for failure were too high. He had people depending on him, you know? It just wasn't, op wasn't an option. Yeah, but I don't see what this has to do with us or our movie. Well, for a while, I wanted my Mr. Dickens was encouraging, so encouraging when I pitched the old save this year cinema with an indie movie idea. I suppose he just figured that he thought my idea was just dandy and it would be a sure su fire success. But now I guess it. He had no faith in the movie at all and was certain that the cinema would have to shut down no matter what. So he was attempting to set you up for failure? Wow. What an crumpet crumb spewing ass face. No, it's not remotely like that at all. You see, when I pitched the idea, Mr. Dickens said he saw his younger self in me. The idealistic younger self of himself, he would have given anything to drop everything and become a movie director. Mr. Dickens wanted more than anything for me to take the risk that he never could. That he and only he short of the burden of my failure, allowing me to try again and maybe succeed. Mr. Dickens said he was so, so proud of me for doing what he never could. And that's precisely why he couldn't allow this place to remain open if it meant it would stay the, com the complete extent of my potential. So that was it then. The end of his dream. Or so I thought. One of the bad reviews really tore the cinema itself apart as a venue that that it suited the horrifying train wreck of a film being shown here. And that's when it occurred to me that just maybe I was actually fighting something that we could use if people are so sure this place is supposedly haunted. Oliver, this place is so, so haunted. Okay, fine. The place is absolutely riddled with spectres, spirits, and other assorted ghouls in your area. <laughs> <laughs> Happy now? Immensely, go on. So, I realised if Mr. Dickens didn't even really want to go in a cinema, and he wants to see me spread my own wings and make my own creations. And this venue alone is considered pretty horrific with terror apparently being my unknowing signature. The solution's obvious. It is? Dalltown's first horror attraction. Wait, like a scare house? Right, right. You know, I realized maybe I was making a mistake trying to go against the grain to convince people that they wanted something that they clearly didn't want. Honestly, this seems to be the best way forward. So that's why you're hacking the place apart? To make the place even more. And slightly, yes. Best of all, Mr. Dickens gets to assist me in creating exhibits and stuff. So though, he gets a second chance at his dream too. What do you think of this poster? Oh. Aww. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> best damn ending. This God is damn it. this occasionally wholesome game. It finally became wholesome. <laughs> Now I know if we can. Now I need to know if we can turn around Ticket Jerry's mm. life as well. <laughs> mm. I hope so. Okay, this is going to hit us with the uh, left jab at some point, but let's just enjoy the moment. Yeah, yeah let's just enjoy this now. Nothing bad Aww. is going to happen in a second. All good. It's all good. Happy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. It needs to be. It needs to be. Yeah, it's the most yeah. Nick answer. It is. God would be proud. Yep, I see that. Exactly. The reaction I was going for. I do. Oh, you something though, you know? And what's that? Well, here it is. Thank you. Sincerely. I could have attempted this on my own, granted. But I don't think I could have ended up here. 
on my own. You believed in me when no one else did, and stood by my side through thick and thin. You even let me document you so I could take a financial risk from a, for a dying cinema. All for the dream of a man you hadn't even met. There's nothing gnarlier than that, Slake. Me do good, me make Olive Man happy. <laughs> I'd go to hell and back for you, man. You know that. Oh, we're gonna do it. We're gonna go for the money. Oh, that'd be nice. Yes. I, I personally do now it. would die for Oliver. Having started this <laughs> stream with this creepy man is worrying me a lot. But here we go. It's a, now we just we just like yeah. this again. Yeah. Maybe right, it's just because I've gotten used to doing doing the voice. But I'd kill for Oliver. <laughs> I don't know. Yes. I think I'd kill for the frogs. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, the yeah. Frogs. <laughs> I'd kill for. Yeah. I'd kill. I'd kill for Randy. <laughs> I, I'd Same. go to hell and back for you, man. You know that. You don't know how much I appreciate that. Man, you know what the best part is? We're the only horror attraction on Earth with real ghosts. I hope. Thank God, we don't even have to pay them since they're dead. Though, I think one of the ghosts might be a dead union leader. So we'll see how that goes. So, I guess this all worked out neatly. I guess so. What of Big Bertha? Um, I did what you suggested. I let her go. I need a picture of Big Bertha frolicking on the plains. Yes. She's free now. To roam phone gods green earth as she pleases. <laughs> that was so much more than I expected and it was everything I've ever wanted to see. <laughs> She's bumping straight into a tree. <laughs> Several times. Uh. Yes, the power of Rimba. <laughs> That might be the best joke that has appeared in this entire game. <laughs> Good. Now she's the great outdoors' problem. Actually, nah, I misspoke earlier, come to think of it. Is Bertha right behind me? Oh, good. Uh, oh, yeah. Best. Part of it is... Hey, Moses, how's it hanging? I heard your movie, movie totally fucking bombed. Yes. Wait. Yes! Is Oliver gonna kill I... a child? <laughs> the best. Part of it is I get to do this. Yes! Yes! <laughs> Out you go, you little scrote. This attraction is 18s only. Yes! Yeet! 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 <laughs> Ouch, my youth glands! Fucking shove him on! <laughs> Rat. He's maimed now. <laughs> this truly is the best possible ending. <laughs> Ah, ah! The ending where everything works out just fine for Oliver Swift, the gnarliest man in Dial Town. <laughs> um, I oh think you mean God. the gnarliest man in Dial Town. <laughs> You're right, it's the true. gnarliest man in Dial Town. <laughs> I'm so, I'm so pleased 